Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 35 of our FTB Ocean Block Let's Play series, where today we are working on automating the runic altar. Let's get started. All right, so it's been a little bit um, since last episode, AFK'd for a while, uh, just so I could back stuff on the fluorite and everything, and ran into a problem that I did not catch until just now. Um, so it's been like, again, probably about another 22 hours of AFKing because I let the I let the game sit in the background while the previous episode renders um, and then uploads and all that good stuff. So, yeah, anyway, problem that we have is I had fluorite, right? So we have fluorite clusters because I ran through, you know, I did the, the cloth mesh thing, got some fluorite. So we had that and I decided to add it to our exporter here for fluorite clusters. Did that, everything was working great. I was like, okay, AFK. And I completely forgot to set up something to do with these, these fluorite. Because normally this machine outputs to the right, right? But fluorite can't be smelted. Fluorite just literally comes straight out of the enriching factory. Um, and like, it doesn't really do much else. I mean, it can go into a pulverizer and we can pulverize it, or it can go into a enriching factory. Um, and get six. So I was like, let's just put it into the pulverizer because we'll get, you know, or I'm sorry, in the uh, enriching factory because we already have this all set up. It's it's pretty fast and everything. It'll be good. Bad idea. Um, and mainly a bad idea because it clogged up our entire processing line because it couldn't go anywhere. And I didn't notice it. And so it's been sitting here for like 12 hours. And so everything's been backstuffing in our system for the past 12 hours. So we have a ton of clusters to process. 3,000 iron, copper, all kinds of junk that needs processed. So yeah, that is a uh, mistake on my fault. So what I need to do is go to the enriching chamber. This is the interface. We need to go to the enriching chamber and get our item extract channel, which is, I didn't name these channels. Um, but this is the insert into the interface. So we need to go to the enriching chamber. Where are you? Where are you? Excuse me. Electrolytic separator, smelting, purifying, enriching factory. Uh, so real quick, we want to turn off processing and we want to set up an extract on this channel. We want to extract fluorite. Um, that way, that's the only thing it can extract from here. And it's going to insert it straight into the interface. So we can turn that back on. So everything else will continue to go over here as it should. But if we set the back of this machine uh, to also be an output, it will allow the refined storage to take this out of here. I'm sorry, the XNet to take it out of here and continue on with the processing. We also want to set this up to round robin so that it can take out, you know, in, in order each stack. So it's just going to go boop, and then it should do that one, and then that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and do the thing. And I think, do we have an upgraded cable on this as well? Can we speed this up? No. Uh, we could put a faster cable on there if we wanted to, but it, it'll eventually catch up. And so we have a lot of stuff that's going to need processed again. So yeah, yay me. Um, yeah, outside of that, uh, oh, you know what I need to do before I do anything else? Let's grab this fluorite. Look at that. We already have 1.2 thousand fluorite. And what I didn't do is add this to this guy here. So we can add fluorite to this. And then I'm going to need to take all of the fluorite out. Can I fit it all? No, and I'm going to need to. So because I'm just going to be putting it right back into the drawer. So I don't want to, you know, not take all of it out at once. Okay, cool. So now all the fluorite's in the drawer and we should start clearing this out because I, I AFK inside of the compact machine so that I don't have to deal with um, the uh, phantoms that spawn. Uh, otherwise, I normally build a box around myself, but since we have the compact machine, it's easier. Uh, and then I came back in and noticed that we were red on two of our external storages and I was like, mm, something, something happened, something was wrong. Um, and yeah, that's what happened. The easiest way to tell when that happens, what it is that happened, <clears throat> is if you come back to your external storage that is set up on your drawer controller, change it to insert only. That way all your auto processing can still happen. And if we look in here, we're gonna see we have 3000 copper, 3000, you know, or some, yeah. Uh, I need to figure out what is going on with the cobalt and the titanium. Also, iron essence apparently did not end up in a drawer. And this is how we can clear up our system. It's the easiest way if you're gonna be using drawers. Uh, we need to figure out what the heck is going on with iron and cobalt real quick. 
the one big thing is though, don't forget to turn this back on or else you'll end up with uh, you know a ton of stuff in your system because it can't take it out. It's set to insert, not extract. Uh, okay, so this cobalt and iron dust, do I not have this going into this furnace? I have them being processed here. No, I do not. Let's set these both up to go in here. Now, titanium dust we do need. So we may end up with an issue with the titanium dust when we get to like, um, like if we need to make more flux dust for flux networks, because if we have titanium dust being exported, it's going to pull it into here before the crafting can complete. We'll deal with that when the time comes. We may just have to come over here, turn that off, get our auto craft for the flux dust. We don't need that much. So I could like say, give me 512 flux dust or something like that. And then that should cover us for a long time. Uh, Anyway, all right, so let's get back to Batania. So as you can see down here, I set up uh, a couple things. First off, I moved our mana spreader up one level um, because I went ahead and set up a mana splitter. The mana splitter is super easy to make. Uh, it's just a recipe of living rock and then mana steel. And as you can see, our living rock and living wood process has completed because we have more than enough of each one of those. And if we go in here, we have 129 of each. So perfect, we don't have less than 128, so we're good. If I were to set this to, uh, I guess, less than 127 at 128 is when it would stop. So we can change that up just so that we have a nice rounded number that's easily divisible. Uh, and this is why I stay in my thing because of phantoms. Let's go ahead and sleep through this night. Not that phantoms, you know, we, we can't d beat phantoms. They don't harm us or anything, but uh, except for when they attack me like that. So rudely, I need to end that man's whole career now, especially since he's stuck and he's not going to start burning. Yeah, sucker. Take that. Another one? That one should be burning, though. Uh, I have my magnet in my backpack, don't I? Yes, because I didn't want to have everything get picked up that we were doing over here with Batanium. Anyway, so I set the mana splitter up and I set up four more pools and I filled this guy up with five stacks of coal, which is it takes about a stack and a half to fill up a pool. So five stacks filled up this whole thing and we're almost completely full on all these. But I did use some to make these mana pearls and mana diamonds. So that is where we are at with these. Um, but we have basically four full pools. I also went ahead and made some mechanism cardboard because I find it to be the easiest way to move the um, mana pools. It's super simple recipe. It's just some sawdust and you can get sawdust by just throwing a log into a pulverizer and that'll get you eight sawdust. So did that. And all we have to do is take this cardboard box, click onto the mana pool and then we can pick it up, okay? And then we can put it back down wherever we want and then shift right click. It'll take the cardboard box off and there you go. You have your block back. Super simple for moving around things. Depending on the pack that you're playing, you may be able to move spawners with it. Some packs allow moving spawners with the cardboard. Some disable it. It is a config option. So just something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, so that is mana and everything set up. So our next step is to start working on our runic altar and getting this guy set up. And again, we want to automate this. So. What we're going to do is set this up and we need to get ourselves um, a few things. And I can't take credit for this build design. This was created by um, System Collapse in his All the Mods 6 to the Sky playthrough. And I am just going to straight copy it because you know what? It's a fantastic design and it works really well. So uh, yeah, we're gonna take it and automate it. Um, and I think I'm gonna move this over here because we have refined storage set up here. I just need to, I kind of built myself into a little box by putting this thing so close. So I don't have a whole lot of options here. Um, also, I was thinking about how you could do this without having to have this alloy wire set up entangled blocks. You could absolutely set up an entangled block to this, um, this guy here, the uh, open crate. Uh, and we, you know what, let's actually demonstrate that. Let's go ahead and do it because Entangled Blocks has been on my to-do, so I've been wanting to check it out anyway. Um, or, well, I've checked it out in the past, but I've want been wanting to play with it, so let's do Entangled Blocks. So what you need is an Entangled Block itself, and it can be bound to blocks up to 32 blocks away or to blocks in other dimensions. I imagine, and we're going to definitely try this, does this work for, like, the um, nuclear waste from mechanism. Can we entangle like a 
waste tank, one of those, uh, oh, what are they, the barrels. Can I entangle the barrel? Like if I put this at the end of a ne mechanism nuclear reactor and I entangle the radioactive waste barrel, can I like put this in a compact machine, have it pipe out of this inside of the compact machine because we entangled it because it's another dimension, and then just have that compact machine be where we store all of the radioactive waste? I don't know. We're, we're going to find out for sure, though, because that, that would be kind of actually kind of nifty. Um, but anyway, so what we can do, we can actually break this alloy wire. And set it up just right here. So it'll kind of make this a little cleaner, which is what we were talking about last episode. How can we make this cleaner? Uh, I think this is going to do for us. And our magnet's not working because we have oh, I did I make this in the last episode? No, I made this now. Uh, the Solignolia is a flower from Mechanism Solignolia. Easy to make, just requires this redstone root, which just requires some grass and redstone dust. Um, and it stops the Batania magnet from working in its radius. And I don't know if you can, can you see the radius? Yeah, it's bound there. Function mode. I think there's like a there's an item from Batania that would let you see the radius of this, but I don't I don't have that. So um, anyway, so what we're going to do is place this entangled block here and I do need to get some of this redstone alloy wire to put onto it. And we could even make no, we can't make it closer because we have to have this here. Yeah. Um, and then we can get the dirt. And theoretically, this should work. So if we entangle bind this and we right click this, there's a shift right click here and then a right click there, you're gonna see the entangled block is bound and it gets this nice little uh, render of the block inside of it and it's really cool. And so if I put some coal in here, if I just get you know half a stack of coal, does this work? No. It's not passing the redstone signal onto this. Darn it, I was hoping that would be awesome. So why are none of these picking up the coal? Interesting. None of the endo flames are eating the coal. Eat the coal. That was weird. It didn't want to do it when they were on the block. Um, man, I was really hoping that would work, that if I put the redstone signal on there, that it would translate over to the other guy. But it doesn't. You can pipe, you can use it to like pipe in and pipe out and stuff like we could put the hopper here instead. And then the hopper, you know, like if I did this, if we did the hopper here, we could put the hopper onto this. And then if I put the coal in here, it'll fall out of there. Oh, look, now it's working. Was there just some kind of sort of lag or something? Because y'all saw that it was not working before, but it all of a sudden is. What if I put this piece back? Uh, and it stopped because they're all eating as they should be. Yeah, they're all they're all lit up, so they're all on fire. I don't understand. What made that all of a sudden start working? I'm not going to question it. Whatever. Anyway, so uh, back to our runic altar. So like I said, though, I kind of I've kind of boxed myself in here. We may end up moving this, which is why, I'm, you know, part of the reason I made the cardboard. Um, and yes. Yeah, so what do we need? We basically need a three by three area for this. We are going to have to craft one rune by itself. So let's. Oh, where do we have refined storage that we can access easy kind of over here? So let's go ahead and put this here. We may move all this, but what are we going to need? We're going to need a couple things. First off, we're going to need uh, some repeaters. We're going to need two repeaters. We're going to need a comparator. We're going to need a crafter. Iron crafter should be fine. We are going to need um, a chest. We're going to need a dispenser. A, another wand of the forest. Bam. Wand of the forest. Then we're going to need some pipes. We're going to need another open crate. We're going to need another chest. Um, yes, another chest for the requisite, the output items to go to. 
and we're going to need a hopper hawk. Okay. Um, or maybe instead of using a hopper hawk, can we use an absorption hopper? Can you blacklist items in this? Does this have a uh, filter? No. I don't know what this slot is, though. But it does not look like there is a filter on this. Um, what other kind of vacuum hopper do we have? Does the vacuumulator have a have a filter? There is a filter add-on. Maybe that'll work actually. The hopper hawk. In order to create the hopper hawk, we have to actually make a. Uh, we have to manually craft at least one rune. So we can avoid that, and we wouldn't wouldn't have to never craft anything. Um, there is a filter allows for item restriction because what we want to filter is living rock because we don't want the living rock that's going to get dropped onto the altar to be picked up so can i add this into here can and we want to deny living rock so if i drop living rock nothing happens but if i drop a wand of the forest it got picked up it did it's not the fastest in the world I don't know if the hopper hawk has any faster, but we also do have upgrades from thermal, so we can put a you know resonant component in there probably, make it a little faster. We'll have to try this and see if this is going to work for us. Um, let me just uh, let me make sure I have everything that we're going to need, and I will be right back. I feel like I'm missing something, so we'll be right back. Okay, the only thing I was missing was another mana spreader, so we can get mana. Um, from this area we're going to move one of our pools over and then we'll have to figure out actually getting mana you know what um i wonder what if you entangle a mana pool can you access that mana like if i were to entangle like if I put this here, but this this could be a pretend mana pool. Can I entangle a mana pool? Okay. Okay, so you are bound to there. Now, if I were to place this mana spreader here, and I were to bind you to here, you're bound there. Can you access this mana? Like, are you are you going to count that as being? mana this will be interesting we're gonna have to see um but anyway that's where we want to set that up uh in the first place all right so what we gotta have we have to have a mana pool we'll see if this works and then we wouldn't have to actually set up another mana pool over here if this works this makes entangled super op to be able to transfer mana like that would be awesome um but we can have a mana. we have our mana pool here we have our mana spreader pointing at our runic altar right in the front of the runic altar is where we're gonna place our repeaters and our redstone comparator, okay? So we're gonna take our comparator and we're gonna place it like so. Um, and then we can take our repeaters and we can place them like so. And in the repeaters, what we're gonna have, um, or I'm sorry, what we're gonna have the repeaters do is trigger this dispenser. If I could get it to face the proper way. Um, let's put this here and there. Come on, turn off the jetpack, there we go. Okay, so the dispenser should be facing the proper direction and it's gonna get the extra wand of the forest. And then what that should do is right click on the altar that we are gonna be using. We also need to get our iron crafter set up and we want this to face upward, just like so. We're gonna have it deposit into a chest. And then that chest is going to get a item pipe on it. And the item pipe can go right on the top of it. Let's just go ahead and hop up here. And then attached to that item pipe is going to be a open crate, which is going to drop right onto our runic altar. And we can set that to extract mode. And so it'll extract out of there. We need to go into our iron crafter and we're going to say redstone pulse. We'll insert the next set. And then we just need to get a little bit of redstone. One, two, three. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, so that handles that. We need to get our cables run down here. So let's grab some cabling. Maybe need some more. We can just leave those ones in there. 
Um, and the best way to route that cabling is probably going to be like so. Jetpack back on. There we go. So that turns the iron crafter on. And then we just need to set our, geez Louise, this jetpack. We really need to figure out creative flight. I'm getting tired of the jetpack. Uh, the vacuumulator can go here. And he is going to be set up to filter out living rock. Okay. So the vacuumulator should pick up everything in this area. It doesn't have... Um, I don't see a range that we can control it with, but that's okay. And then what we want to do is get an exporter from the vacuumulator. And we can just... Or I'm sorry, not an exporter. A importer. And we can import items from here. So if you uh, know how the, you, you can kind of almost see how this is going to work um, if you have been following along. Let's go ahead and turn our jetpack on. We're going to sleep through this night and we're going to create a couple recipes for some runes and see if, in theory, everything is working as it should be. Um, so let's go ahead. Let's grab our runes. All right. So what do we need? We need at Batania runes. And we're going to just go ahead and we're going to teach, you know, for example, the water rune. And the water rune is this stuff dropped onto the runic altar. So we're going to click this, but we're going to change the runic altar here because we don't need a runic altar in the crafting recipe. What we need is living rock. So we just change that over to a single piece of living rock. Bam. And that is going to be our recipe. Living rock, mana powder, mana steel, bone meal, sugar cane, and a fishing rod. Okay. Um... We're going to, need to teach the system how to make fishing rods. Uh, and then we need to get our rune back. Let's see. You know how to make bone meal, sugar cane, man of steel ingots is going to be this recipe. And the only thing you don't know how to make is mana powder. And we may be able to teach the system. Uh, we actually will be able to teach the system how to do this. But let's get some redstone and just make a stack of mana powder real quick so it's in the system. So let's just drop all that in there. Uh, and it didn't do all of it. Let's try again. We picked up before it, you know, finished. Okay. So if we put the mana powder away and we come over here. Um, and actually, you know what I'm going to do before we set this up? I'm going to name that. Oh, oh, that's weird. Oh, the red alley wire doesn't render in here right no you don't go in there I mean, you go in there um we're gonna grab this crafter up back from this real quick and we're gonna name this runic altar that way you know it's easier to identify so we need our anvil runic altar um and i need one level try again Runic altar. Okay. So we come back over here. Place this bad boy down. Facing into that chest again. I figured it was going to place it the incorrect way. But we can easily rotate it. Give it its recipe. And let's see what happens. Okay. So we have everything set up. It's going to... So what's going to happen? Or what should happen? We're going to request the, the uh, water rune, right? It's going to put the items into this chest which I would honestly prefer the chest to be facing the other way. Does it really matter? Not at all. Does my brain want it to face this way? Yes, absolutely. So we're going to change it up. So it's going to place the items into the chest, and then they will get piped into the open crate, which will then drop them. And it's going to drop everything. The runic altar, the way that it, its crafting works is you drop the items or you can right-click the items onto it. Um, and it will do that. So it's going to take the item and it's going to put it all around. And as long as it has mana, once it has all the items that is valid for the recipe, it is going to start the craft. Now, once it starts the craft and it, and it is ready to complete the craft, it will the comparator will emit a redstone signal. See, nothing's going on now, but once we're ready, it will emit a redstone signal when it's ready to craft. And what that's going to do is trigger the redstone and it's going to kick both of these on, right? Um, so it's going to kick on the dispenser, which is going to trigger the wand of the forest, which should craft the rune. And it's also going to trigger the comparator or the crafter to insert the next set and then do the next recipe for us. 
The master item should get picked up by the vacuumulator. The rune should get picked up here, but it will not pick up the living rock that's going to get dropped because all of the other items that get dropped are going to actually end up like this. You know, they're going to go into the runic crafters UI, but the living rock will not. It'll just be sitting there. So we don't want the vacuumulator to pick that up. Does that make sense? So if we did all of this correctly, if we search for rune and we ask for a rune of water, we should see the items go in there. They're going to drop. There we go. And it's emitting a redstone signal saying that it's crafting. But what it's doing right now is telling us we ain't got no mana. So our entangled block, though, would have been really cool if that worked. It didn't. I was really hopeful, but it did not work for us. Um, can we clear this out? Yes. Can we clear you out, too? Because you're bound to that connection cleared. OK, cool. Uh, we can just throw those two in there so that we have them and we need to go grab a mana pool. Um, so let's get an extra mana pool. And then we'll get our cardboard. And we're going to swap these ones out so we can take this one. And we can put this one there so it'll start filling up with mana. And we're going to take this one and we're going to take it. And then now this should be filling up with mana and you can see it is doing so. So watch, it's gonna happen. It's gonna trigger, bam, they got picked up. And if we had another recipe that needed inserted, it would do the thing. But if we look in here, we have two water runes, just like that. Uh, and that is automating the runic altar in a very compact, easy to manage space. I have seen other people, um, automate the runic altar using like integrated dynamics and that stuff. But this is super compact. It's a three by three square, three high, and it, it just works. And it's using vanilla redstone to be able to do most of the work. The, I mean, honestly, most of this could be done with um, vanilla outside of the refined storage, of course. But you could do most of this with vanilla stuff. You could probably, you could move the crafter up and have it dispense into a hopper that could dispense into the open crate. Um, the hopper hawk from Batania would be able to do this vacuumulator part. I just didn't feel like making it. Uh, and yeah, so basically between vanilla and Batania, you can have all of this automated and then refined storage makes it easy to, you know, just auto craft. But that is auto crafting runes with the runic altar. So then now all we need to do is teach the system how to make all the other runes. Like, what do we need? You know, fire runes? Sure. Let's teach you how to make that. Um, it knows how to make none of this stuff, which is always great. Uh, and then, like we said, we just need to swap out the runic altar with living rock. So if we do that for living rock. There's the recipe. So we just need to teach the system how to make nether wart. And all this stuff is good to have anyway, because we haven't, you know, made any of this stuff. Uh, we need to teach the system how to make the nether bricks, which is smelting nether rack. We can put that in our smelter. You are a craft. You go into the runic altar. You're a standard craft. Um, gunpowder we have, right? We have gunpowder. I don't have a mob farm. Oh, we have 14,000 gunpowder. We're, oh, we must be getting gunpowder from one of the uh, sifters. So we don't have to worry about the gunpowder. So what we can do is put the rune in here. You are a smelting recipe. So advanced smelting factory. You go there. Gold crafter. You go there. And then we can come down here and we can say, hey, I want a rune. I want a fire rune. And I want a water rune. So it should do the thing. Huh. Huh. Oh, oh. Okay, that's what happened. That was my fault. Remember, I picked that up to name it. I didn't reset it. Um, let's just go ahead and break the runic altar so we get all that stuff back quickly. We can go up here, put this back. You are going to probably need rebound to the one to the man. That's the runic altar. Let's go up and cancel the two crafts. I was like, wait a minute. What the heck just happened? This should have been working flawlessly. Put all this stuff away. You can go away. You can go away. You can go away. Now, if I come down here and request the things, you are set properly, right? Yes. Redstone pulse inserts the next set. There we go. So now if I request this and I request this, now it's doing it properly. So it's going to do the thing. You're going to see 
It's doing the craft. Do 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 do. It's gonna trigger. Boop. Wand of the forest. Insert the next set. Everything starts dropping. Um, though the vacuumulator was too fast. Okay, so maybe we don't put this in here. Huh. Yeah, because we it the vacuumulator picked up faster. The this dropped and then the vacuumulator picked it up. So again, we ran into an issue. Let's try it now without the upgrade in there. Let the vacuumulator be as slow as it can be. Honestly, it doesn't need to be fast. Let's try this again. So put these things away. Put my wand of the forest away, but that's okay. Uh, we should have got the runes of fire in there. But if we request rune of fire and we request rune of water. Okay, so that's doing the thing. How are we doing on our mana? Pretty good. Okay. It's the vacuumulator still too fast. It's interesting that it's like once it picks up, it triggers the vacuumulator to start looking for things. And so it's it's doing it it's doing its thing too fast. So maybe maybe we do need to make a hopper hawk. And do go the hopper hawk route. Because the hopper hawk is not at, not the fastest thing in the world. We just need to make a rune of air. So we can actually just teach the system how to do the rune of air for us. And then we shouldn't have to worry about it. And then we can set up a hopper hawk instead. So let's get rune of air. And that's the recipe for that. Except we need to do living rock. Uh, I happen to have one on me. Okay. And then string feather carpet would probably be the only thing that you need to know how to make. Because we'll have string, we should have plenty of feathers, and then the carpet, yes, okay. Carpet goes in here. Uh, excuse me. I think I, excuse me. Sir, where are all my recipes? Why are you freaking out? Hello? Anybody know what the heck is going on here? Um, all right. Well, we got some stuff to figure out. I need to look into this. So, yeah, I guess we're going to end the episode here. I'm going to reload the world, come back and see all our recipes just disappeared. Y'all saw that happen. I don't know what happened, but they all disappeared. So we're going to come back next episode and see what's up. So, uh, yeah, if you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it. And it really does help out the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one. Somebody please help me with these recipes.